In this presentation, we are going to look at the beta type 1 distribution. Now, it's a worked example. Uh, beta type 1 distribution with parameters alpha and lambda. Okay, I get a bit tongue tied when I use these phrases a lot, these Greek letters. Usually, it's actually written in terms of beta, but for some reason, I have trouble typesetting. So I just went with lambda this time instead, just to make life easy on myself. Uh, f of x, this is the probability density function there, 1 over beta of alpha times alpha ga, uh, lambda uh, times this expression here, x to the power of alpha minus 1 times 1 minus x to the power of lambda minus 1, okay, for x between 0 and 1. Now, we're going to use the beta function here, and we know that it has a relationship with the gamma function of... So the beta function here, alpha of the beta function of alpha lambda is equal to the beta function, sorry, the gamma function of alpha times the gamma function of lambda divided by the gamma function of alpha plus lambda. Okay, so that's a very important identity that you should know. And also it's handy to recognize the general structure of the beta function in terms of integrals, okay? And that's the gamma function there, gamma of lambda is a gamma function for the integer lambda, okay? Now, uh, I've done these previously, so I'm just going to state them. The expected value of x equals alpha divided by alpha plus lambda, and the variance of x is alpha times lambda divided by alpha plus lambda squared times alpha plus lambda plus 1, okay? So we're just going to take them as given in this instance. So, suppose that the proportion of x of a surface area in a randomly selected quadrant that is covered by a certain plant has a beta distribution with alpha equal 5 and gamma equal, or sorry, lambda equal to 2. Alpha equal 5, lambda equal 2. Calculate the following. The expected value in the variance, probability of x less than or equal to 0 0.2 and the probability of x being between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. All right, now, so that x equals, sorry, that should be beta there. Beta function, beta 1 of alpha and lambda. Given that x is a beta 1 uh, distributed random variable, okay, for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1, this is uh, as follows, okay? So here we have alpha is 5, lambda is equal to 2, x to the power of alpha minus 1 is x to the power of 4, four minus, 5 minus 1 being 4. x to the minus 1 is simply, you know, sorry, 1 minus x to the power of 2 minus 1 is, you know, um, 1 minus x to the power of 1, okay? So uh, what we have to do here is work out the gamma function corresponding to the beta function there of 5 and 2. So just as a quick remark, we're going to invert it there. So we end up with the inversion of it there. The gamma function of 5 plus 2 is the gamma function of 6, and that is 5 factorial. Sorry, that's the gamma function of 7, which is 6 factorial. Okay. So that's 6 factorial. Uh, gamma function of 5 is 4 factorial, and the gamma function of 2 is 1 factorial. This also doesn't like factorials for some reason. So 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 1 factorial is essentially 6 by 5 times 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial. 1 factorial is 1, okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Four factorials cancel out, so we're left up with 6 by 5, and that is equal to 30. So when we multiply it all out, this is what our probability density function is, the, the key part of it there, 30 times x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 5. Now we're going to integrate that later on, but essentially it's a straightforward enough calculation now, okay? Um, Alpha is equal to 5, lambda is equal to 2, so it's essentially a very straightforward calculation to work out the expected value. 5 divided by 5 plus 2 is 5 divided by 7, so we end up there with 
5 divided by 7, 0 0.7143. And likewise, when we calculate the variance, essentially put in the values of alpha and lambda into this expression there. Alpha times lambda is 5 times 2, which is 10. Uh, alpha plus lambda squared is 5 plus 2 squared is 7 squared, which is 49. And 5 plus 2 plus 1, alpha plus lambda plus 1 is 8. And that just turns into a bit of calculator work. Okay, so the variance there is 0 0.0255. If you want to ask for the standard deviation, just go at the square root of that. Okay, so that's the first one done. Now, this is where we have to get, this is where they calculate the cumulative distribution function up to 0 0.2. Now, it's actually straightforward enough, really. Essentially, what we have to do is get, the, we've, we've done all the hard work already. So, x is a value between, to, can take some value between 0 and infinity. Actually, I forgot what it says up at the top. Did we say... Uh, x is okay it goes up to one okay anyway in this case we're actually asked for the range of values from zero or uh, zero the the probability that it takes a value between zero and two so essentially what we have to do there is calculate the probability of x less than or equal to two that is the integral from zero the min the lowest possible value to the upper bound of our limit 0 0.2 and what we do there is integrate the probability density function and that was straightforward enough. That probability density function was 30 times x to the 4 minus x to the 5. Okay. And there we go. Uh, calculate that out. We have 30 times x to the 5 over 5 minus x to the 6 over 6. Evaluated from 0 0.2 to 0. A little bit of calculator work. We should end up with 0 0.0016. All right. Now, obviously, those are, you know, 0 0.2 to the power of 5 and 0 0.2 to the power of 6. Anyway, a bit of hard work on the calculator. Um, so, and the last part is calculate the probability that x is between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. Essentially, this is very similar to what we've done before. We calculate the integral of the PDF between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. So, 30 times our PDF, or 30 uh, times x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 5 dx, and we take that integral and get a definite integral, integral between 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. So we end up with the um, same sort of calculation really here. We're just using different limits of integration, 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. So essentially, you know, this is actually what we should have worked out in the last part, okay? And when we evaluate this integral at definite integral at 0 0.4, we should get this. A little bit of calculator work, we should get 0 0.0394. Okay, that's that one there. We'll leave that.